Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How you doing today, Jay? Great, Michael. Thank you. It's, uh, I don't know about down in L.A., but it's cloudy, overcast, and a little blush up here in San Francisco. It's like winter has started to roll in. Yeah, it's that typical L.A. weather, but, you know, sunny and clear, but... Yesterday was the first morning where it was a little bit cooler in the morning, and we were all pretty excited to see that. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to get past the heat, and hopefully, yeah, we'll get we'll get some of this rain that they're talking they're going to dump on us. Yeah. Um. We need it. So we've got no guests this week, but we've got a couple interesting topics that we definitely want to hit on. Um, yeah. First one is really timely, and and it's you know it's tried and true seems like topic of discussion for the last few weeks. Streaming update, um, more specifically Apple Music. Um, yeah. Th- the day we are recording this, the free trial ends. The three month free trial that I'm sure everybody probably jumped into ends. Um, what what are you what are you gonna do? Well, I, I'm not the typical, you know, music fan. I, I love Spotify. I love Apple Music. I'm a big fan of Slacker, RDO. You know, I'm I'm gonna continue. I actually purchased the family plan, so you know, all the kids are on it. Um and I would just note that yeah, the the free period ends for those who signed up, you know, on day one and which was a lot of a lot of folks. Um but there's still people who are you know, signing on to uh, that free period, we're we're gonna keep it. Um, I there, there's some things that I really like about um, Apple Music, and I love that there's competition because I think it's gonna make Spotify better. I think it's gonna make all the competitors better. Um, already, you know, um, Spotify with their Discover Weekly. Um, yep. I've I love, really, I love that yeah, I do too, and it's it's really good. And and I don't whether it was spurred on by you know Apple Music or not, who knows? But talking specifically about um, Apple Music, the family plan was so reasonably priced, you know, so I can get five people on there for fifteen dollars. Uh, I, I think that's pretty great. Um, even my my daughter, who listens to most of her music on YouTube, uh, she she wants it and uh, she wants to explore it. So we're going to do that. Um, I think that a lot of folks are going to stay on. Um, what I've been reading in the trades lately is about half the people they anticipate are going to drop off. So they, the rough estimates, and we don't have these real numbers yet, but the rough estimates, you've probably seen them too, are 15 million people um, have uh, you know, signed on and about you know, half that, 7.5 million are going to continue on paying. And you know, the first thing I, I think about um, when I hear those numbers is, well, you know, Spotify... You know they're up to roughly twenty million paid out of their almost eighty million yeah, I was just subscribers, reading right? That they're expecting to cross the hundred million mark fairly soon, and that's that's amazing, and that's great. But on the paid front, you know, let's say that those numbers are right—that it's twenty million. Well, they've been in the U.S. for four years. You know, Apple's got—if those numbers are true—Apple's got a third of that number in 90 days but you know the, some some of the questions and this this comes from any type of service any website that that does free trials and then sells and the numbers so questions i would ask are um all right seven million stay on pain how many of them are staying on because they didn't realize it was ending and it just renewed right i think there's going to be a big number That's of fair. people who you know if you weren't paying attention, ding, your credit card just got dinged, and you're now a paying customer. Yeah. In the yeah. In, how in, long in, in, in the stats, um, and then here's what I would also love to see is um, how many are actually using it. So okay, you've got seven million paying customers, but when was the last time they all logged in? 
Right. And, and are they active users? Are they, are they active users? Because, you know, I, we'll see these numbers thrown around a lot, especially when people talk Twitter. It's like, oh, Twitter's got 300 million people. Yeah, mm-hmm. but how many of them are actually, yeah, they've got registered accounts. But the right. vast majority of them have never been used. Yeah, that's a um, good point. You and, know, and, and, I don't know if they would release that number. I doubt they would release it unless it's an impressive number. True, Pandora does, and that's what I love about Pandora. Last time uh, I checked, I think it was something around 80 million active users. And and I love that. And then they tell you what they deem an active user, yeah. that, it, that that person comes many, on X many, amount of time. How yeah. many minutes a day, whatever whatever their metric is. Because yeah. here, here's, you know, so my take is if I wasn't in the business and I need to use Apple Music for clients, I'd cancel my subscription. Um, as a consumer, there's nothing there that, that I would – want over what I'm already getting on Spotify. I wouldn't pay for both. But again, because I need to do it for clients, it's a business expense. Right. Um, but I can tell you this, as a user of Apple Music streaming, it's probably been four weeks since I've last streamed anything. At least four weeks since I've last streamed anything on Apple Music. Yeah. And how long since you've used Spotify? Daily. Yeah. Daily. I use Spotify. Yeah, and it's interesting. I, I think I, I've had a little bit different um, reaction to it. I, I use Apple Music probably probably daily. Um, I love that it's integrated into my own playlist that I've made. They they pop them right in there, and and I listen to that a lot when I drive. For some reason, I tend to listen to Spotify when I'm at work or. Um, in the evenings at home, um, not really sure why. I do like to explore um, some of the uh, the playlists that they curate. I think they're really good. I think apples are they've got a different feel to them. I I, I love smaller. I love the Apple playlists and I always have, but that's that wouldn't be enough of a reason for me to to pay monthly just to get their playlists right well you've got the same thing at spotify right you've got playlists you've got full albums you know on street date you if whatever albums come out on that catalog to catalog you basically have access to the same music pretty much pretty much give or take a small percentage here or there yeah um you know if something's not available in in Apple Music it's probably not available in Spotify I mean that's what it comes down to the differences are small and and I so I'm an active iTunes user because I still will buy music because I want to support the bands I really love and I can't stand the the kludgy UI between Apple Music and iTunes because they are two different services Mm -hmm. when in my mind, they should be one service. iTunes is the service, and you can buy and stream from iTunes. No, that you know you've you've got a ser- you've there's two different search engines. One right. search engine only searches Apple Music. Another one searches iTunes. If you're in iTunes, it's not going to give you anything to say. Click here to stream it. Right. You know, Why and do you I, think and, that and, is, Mike? I mean, do you think it's because... I don't think they, they want to cannibalize want to, the digital exactly. sales. Pure and yeah, they want to they wanna let that business, um, you know, that decay curve kind of happen uh, As natural naturally. as possible. Because, you know, I felt this way months and months ago that if Apple iTunes just turned streaming on, that would probably kill digital sales almost overnight because now everybody who goes into itunes going i want to buy this new album oh wait a second there's one button that says buy for 9.99 there's one that says stream it i'll stream it i I would only argue with that point i i thought the same thing and working so closely with amazon for so many years when amazon and and let's be honest it's it's a much smaller percentage um, but Amazon started their Prime Music streaming, and if you go on and check out, you know, a new album, there are two buttons there. There's a button there that yeah, says but, you, know, I you will can say buy it here, Am- or you Am- can str- Amazon's get it, stream it for free. UI and web pages are a freaking cluster f disaster. Yeah. Yeah, I it's mean, like 
you know there there there's so much they they are the exact they are the bizarro world apple where apple is trying to be one button simplistic amazon is a million features of this recommended to this and you viewed this and other people right. clicked that and and do you want it on kindle or do you want it on this format it's just like right it's overwhelming and there's so, a so reason for that you know with with apple you're talking about one configuration prior to streaming now too um but you look at amazon and they have all these different verticals you know well, car Am parts and amazon started you know when, it, when you're when you're looking at just music it just started as selling cds yeah and then they added other formats and then they added selling downloads of mp3s and then so you're right i mean I, I, I'm, I'm, I totally get what it's going. And listen, I'm sure Amazon probably spends billions of dollars analyzing what works and what doesn't work. So it's not just made haphazardly. But I, you know, I don't buy, I don't buy music from Amazon at all. It's my last go-to place. If I can't find it on iTunes, I can't find it on Spotify. I will check Amazon to see just by chance is it available on CD only or is there an import or or whatever. If I'm mm -hmm. buying MP3s, and and believe me, I use Amazon Music. That's my cloud service. If I buy an MP3 from Amazon Music or Amazon itself, it just automatically shows up right. in my lock. I don't That's do right. that. I will still buy it from iTunes and sync my iTunes up to Amazon. iTunes yeah. is a simple to use. Find it, buy it, done. Right, right. And I think that with Amazon, um, I know that they've heard loud and clear the messages from artists, managers, labels, one of which was your music vertical, especially on the digital side, looks exactly like all those other verticals. And it's very clunky. It's like buying a bar of soap. I exactly. So what they've done, I don't know if you've noticed, but they've done a couple of things um, on the mobile side where it's got a beautiful interface it doesn't look like the store on mobile it there's also some things where a lot of people aren't aware that you know a majority of the music on Amazon uh, on the digital front there are lyrics um, so as you listen on on your portable device the lyrics go by and I know you and I have been discussing you know having um, a show devoted to Amazon and Amazon Music and all of the, you know, ins and outs there. And I don't want to, you know, go too deep into that rabbit hole here. But the point is that Amazon, at least on the music front on the website, isn't as elegant and user-friendly as a Spotify, RDO, Deezer, Apple Music kind of thing. And, and I think that if they really want to compete in the space... They're going to have to get there. They're going to have to get there. They they don't really have the the mind share in in my opinion as well when it comes to the streaming space, the 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 music digital space. Um, people in the know know. Right. The average person doesn't. I mean, I can't tell you how many people who are prime customers have no idea of all the great other features you get from Amazon Prime yeah. not just music but the videos yeah um, so you know Amazon's Amazon's got that natural problem Apple does one thing we sell music that's it mm -hmm. Amazon yeah. says we sell music and we sell snow tires and we sell bars of soap right and right. and you know that's a challenge to be something to everyone um, yeah yeah, and on the streaming side, you know, they, they've they had a lot of trouble because they haven't had all of the majors, for one. They, you know. just, they, they, just, they just got Universal. Yeah, they just got Universal, and of course that's huge because that's Universal, that's Capital, EMI, you know, that's that's a monster. And, and I think that's going to help, but you're absolutely right. Something you touched on, uh, I know from dealing with Amazon so closely, is that I'll speak to people about Amazon Digital, and, and the first thing I'll hear is, oh, they have, they have digital music? Well, they've had digital music for a long for time. a long time. And they have a footprint. I mean, they, they've they, got they, tens of millions of people Let's give coming. Amazon credit. They were the first digital um, service without DRM. Without DRM. They, they, had, they had no restrictions on, on 
on right. digital downloads. That's a good point. That's they the, set the they, tone. They set the tone for that. They caused everybody else to, to follow to, suit. To follow suit and rip out digital rights management from the. Yeah, people forget about that. There used to be these copy protection. They they removed copy protection. You couldn't play it simple. on this device. Yep. You could share it. They went to, that's why they call it Amazon MP3. You're just buying a plain old unrestricted MP3 from Amazon. So, right. you know, I, I give them credit, you know. Yeah. You know, and I've said this in the past, I like their music service because at least when I was researching um, um, iTunes Match when it first came out, um, there was a lot of restrictions. You know, iTunes Match wouldn't let me upload. Because right. I had so much music that I purchased elsewhere, meaning in, ma you mainly mean in the beginning, right? Meaning CDs that I purchased and then ripped, and they were not purchased from iTunes. And and iTunes, and I don't know if it's the case anymore, but initially had a restriction of you could only have X amount of music in your locker that was purchased elsewhere. Yeah. I, and, I think and, those restrictions have gone I, to the wayside, and, and, but I know and, what you're and, talking and about. And Amazon had no restrictions, and I think there were like. 250,000 songs you could upload yeah. compared to Apple's like 20,000. 25, 000, or, 25 yeah, exactly. which, which I remember when it, it first close. launched, serious music collectors were like, are you freaking kidding me? 25,000? And it's got to be so much of it purchased from iTunes? Re terrible restrictions. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, you know, Amazon is definitely, I give, that's why I like them. They are kind of quietly out there breaking trends. Right. You know, they're they're doing these things. You know, listen, um, I love their Amazon Echo, the mm -hmm. the 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 voice activated tabletop sure. device, because um, that ties that, that ties straight into your Apple Music account, Apple Prime Music, um, Tune In Radio. I just turn around and say, Hey, play this radio station, and it starts playing it. Play this playlist, and it starts playing it. Right. Um, suggest music. It does it. So those, th there's interesting things like that where I'm just like, you know, I'm sure at some point in time Apple will go, all right, we're going to integrate that into Apple TV or we'll create a standalone device or, or whatever. But right now Amazon is doing a, a number of interesting things where you're like, okay, these guys are, yeah. these guys are quietly behind the scenes making some waves. Right. I, I agree with you. And I think that, you know, we'll see what happens with this new Apple TV launch, you know, where you can, you know, use voice commands, you know, with that. And and I think both of those companies are very smart and they have very talented people working there and they're innovative. Um, Apple, um, you know, with Apple Music, if you look at their playlists compared to, say, the Amazon playlists, um there, there's a different kind of feel to, I think, the Amazon ones. Some of their playlists are very good, but Apple goes a little deeper for kind of music freaks. You know, they'll say, oh, well, you like these hip-hop artists? Well, here are their influences. Right. Um, here's where they sampled some of their, um, you know, original music samples from. Um, here, here is one of the things I noticed a lot lately is Apple Music has been highlighting um, producers, yep. and I love that. You know, some of these great producers, not just the Todd Rundgrens of the world, where you can almost kind of hear that sound, but you know, Jack Douglas, and you know, uh, there, there's just so, so many of those great ones, and I would never have thought to kind of put together a playlist on on a producer. You know, yeah, and I love those, and I've had a lot of fun with Apple Music kind of going through those playlists, and some of them are, you know, some of them are kind of silly and um, almost, uh, you know, just for fun, and some of them go really deep, um, but I think, you know, you and I have talked about this before, you know, that that curation is super important, and I wanted to bring up, I, I was... Um, Speaking on a panel a, a couple of weeks ago, and the topic came up about um, playlists and whether they should be kind of curated by an algorithm or curated by humans. And my, my first response, you know, that I thought about was, well, it should be human. But then as we kind of got into the debate and looked at how good some of these algorithms are at pulling things together, 
Um, I think that it's kind of it's got to be both. It's got to be a combination. I I I think and and from the from a simple point of just being able to scale, to be able yeah. to to actively generate new playlists to keep things fresh and active. If if it's a hundred percent humans. You're, 30 million you're, tracks your overhead of just hiring people to do this is going yeah. to be astronomical and eventually you're going to tap out the knowledge base you know now in the, at some point you start you know getting the radio shack employees going all right you put together a playlist well i don't really know music well you you got an mp3 player yeah now you're an expert yeah. um so i think you know having the algorithm basically create the base and have somebody personally do a quick review of going okay that makes sense that make how did that artist slip in Mm -hmm. let me let me mark that tweak it so it doesn't have i think that's where the combination is gonna is gonna be great i agree i think we need more people like gary stewart um gary stewart used to work at rhino and then he went to work for apple and when he was at apple he did all those itunes essentials remember those Mm -hmm. where they had like four tabs the first tab would be if if you're only going to listen to the first you know 10 hits of this band these are the ones and then you could kind of go progressively deeper and the fourth one was you know like deep tracks and he made, you know, I'm not sure the number, but I'm sure it was in the thousands of these things. And I think that's what some of these streaming services need is that level of uh, love, you know, and passion. Well, I, I think that's, that's what Amazon needs. Amazon needs to treat, to treat their music section not just as another department. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, and that's, it, that was the complaint early on from the labels when I started meeting with Amazon is that you're, you're treating it as though it was denim or diapers. And I know they've hired some smart people and I know they've made some moves. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that you have to look at digital music as what it is at Amazon. It's not one of their top you know, money makers. Sure. It, it does get people into the store, but that number's diminishing. It's not like of years past well, and, 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 and that, that's traffic. why you know you're probably never going to see an amazon music page with nothing but music on it because their goal is to get you to well while you're looking at that mp3 why don't you also pick up the autobiography and the dvd and this and that so mm-hmm. you, it it is it's all about upselling i mean that's that's what yeah. amazon you know you're coming in for the 99 cent mp3 and you're leaving having bought a a DVD, right? Yeah, and With then no, maybe a new microwave uh, or something. Exactly. I mean, you know, they're the Walmart. Yeah, that's the Walmart uh, model. Yeah, and and for a music, you know, a casual fan, I, I think that's fine, and, and that you know, for an Apple or a Spotify or some of these other services that we talk about, they're sure they're going after the casual fan, but they're also going after a more passionate fan. You know, one that um, spends a little bit more time because their goal is not to get streams. Um, their goal is to get subscribers. Well, yeah, and you I th- know, I, I think Amazon's goal is to get a purchase, not interfere with your your drive to make a purchase. Um, Amazon's goal is not to have you dig deep and research and who who was influenced by this person and where did this who's this related to like you can do when you're in spotify or apples like oh okay i'm listening to this oh this is a related artist i'm going deeper and deeper you know they want you to spend time they want you to stay there and keep listening Mm -hmm. amazon amazon wants you to make a purchase yeah i think they'll go that direction is if you're going to be successful in music as physical sales you know dip and of course they're dipping less at amazon than most places um and as uh digital music dips um you know as people move to streaming i think it's going to be competition on marketing meaning that how am i going to differentiate my service you know from this other one great playlists you know that will certainly help and i think apple's done a great job in the first 90 days of their playlists, I, I really do. Um, I commend them for that. Um, I think also making it simple, um, and that may be one of the areas where people, some people complain that it's maybe not as user-friendly. 
um, to navigate as its uh, competitors. Um, I think there are some areas where they can certainly improve. I, I give them pretty high marks for the first 90 days because we all know how difficult it is to launch a music service. But the other part of Apple Music that I think it, people don't really understand yet is Connect. Well, I don't know if Apple even understands that yet. Yeah. You know, I think maybe the goal was to have a kind of a social, you know, not maybe not ping, but something social that people could interact with and bands could talk about their art and, you know, that sort of thing. And I, I you know, I get that, you know, at a high level, but, you know, at the end of the day, how how is that different than what I'm already using, you know, maybe with, you know, Twitter Facebook, yeah, I mean, Instagram. From, from from the artist standpoint and the fan standpoint, why is why is the fan going to go hang out in Apple Connect versus following the artist on Facebook or Twitter? And, you know and, what I was and thinking, why is the artist going yeah. to invest the time to make Apple Connect live and active yeah. when when they're already spending that time in four, five, six, seven other locations? Well, let's talk about that for a minute because. When I was kind of exploring Connect um, a couple days ago, I saw a lot of my favorite artists were on there, and there were some cool images. Okay, that's kind of cool. There were some little notes about things. Okay. But what I thought would be really cool is if that really drove more towards the service. For example, if you like Cheap Trick, maybe there's, you know, Robin's talking about here, here are three playlists that I put together of, uh, you know, for whatever reason, or here are some playlists, um, that are, you know, our influences or, um, these are my favorite songs by whoever. Uh, I think that would, you know, to try to tie the two together, if it was more of a playlist discovery mechanism, I think that might be kind of cool, but just to have, uh, I, I think that's it, what they, they've, they, they, they intend to and, and have pitched it as, is, you know, the artists can go in here and they can share their music and they can share these other playlists. The problem is Apple is not going out there and encouraging the artists to do that. And, and when I say artists, I don't actually mean the artists themselves because the artists themselves very rarely are going to do this. People like you and me. I've got four clients up on Apple Connect. Um, let me tell you, all four of them I... I I signed up the day it was announced. Mm -hmm. One of them went, was approved almost immediately. Two more took like a month. And the fourth one finally just got approved. So first of all, that's not encouraging to people like me. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? What's the difference? Where were you going? What was going on behind that? And then there's no... It sort of feels like they just created this and said, "Here you go, go play in your playground now." Um, we're here's a PDF file of best practices. Please, that's a that's a sales sheet. That's not how to really get use out of this. Yes, I know you're supposed to post photos. Yes, I know fans want to engage. Don't. That's not the stuff. I you know I want to yeah. know how to really use this, but none of that exists. Um, why isn't Apple reaching out to some of these big clients and going? We want you to. We want to make sure you're using this daily. What can we do to help you to use this daily? Do you need us to? You know, there. Nobody's going. What works? What doesn't work? You know, it took. Yeah. It took a month, month and a half before you could actually update Apple Connect from your desktop. It was always mobile that you could only do it. So now you can do it on desktop, which is great because for me, managing all these clients, the workflow is on the desktop. 90% of the time. But guess what you can't do? So back to your original point about you they want you to push as an artist, push your playlist, push your albums. Um, on mobile, you can go find that album as me, as Mike, and then mm -hmm. I can say, I want to share this to Apple Connect. And then it'll come up and it'll say to which account. Well, I want to share it to my Dream Theater account. This album was released 25 years ago today. Great. I can do all that on mobile, which is cool. You can't do that on the desktop. Yeah, they need I can't, to fix I can't, that. I can't share a playlist. I can't share an album to Apple Connect. And I'm sort of just like, are you kidding? Isn't that the absolute 
root of what Apple Connect is, is to share, to get your artists to share your music, yeah. to share what's going on. And you will not, and you don't support that in the iTunes desktop yeah. app. Yeah, I think they have to. I do I do get why mobile is so important, you know, because most people use their mobile as opposed to their desktop and and all of that. But your point is is well taken. They they certainly need to do that. I found a little bit different experience with Connect when I meet with Apple. It's one of the first agenda items. They're definitely talking to labels, um artists and managers about Connect. Um, so I know it's a priority with them. Um, they're very smart people. I, I think that they know well, you know, what some of the issues are. Yeah. And I, I hope that they get to a point where I guess what I'm looking for, Mike, is, is an identity. What I know what the difference is between Twitter and Facebook. I know when you would use one and not the other. Why, yeah, why with do connect, I, why do I need I, ca- connect? I'm not quite sure yet. And um, other than a couple of obvious things, there's a lot of traffic on Apple Music. Okay, that's great. And it's, it's, if they're there listening to music, it gives them something to do while they're listening to music. Maybe they'll um, browse through there and you know, sign up for their favorite artists. And, and that's, that's great. But like I said, I, I, I see a great opportunity there. Um, I'm not sure that they've found that identity yet. Yeah, you know, and and it's great that they're out talking to people, but it feels like it's more of selling it, like you should be using it. Okay, great. You're telling me that and I understand that, but do you really understand the hurdles of using it? Yeah, I think you they're know, listening. That, 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 because my honest opinion is the answer is no. The way this whole thing was launched at the very beginning was just like, are you freaking kidding me? Did you even use this yourself? Mm -hmm. Was this just built based on somebody's specs saying this is what we should put into it and nobody bothered to actually use it? That's what it felt like from day one because if, if they had talked to people like me who's got to manage four different accounts through there, I'd be like, you're, you guys are freaking idiots. Yeah. You one person yeah, again, I don't manage multiple accounts through this. If I'm on the go, yes. But we're working in offices. We've got clients. We sit here and we have calendars in front of us. Today it's this. All right, I got to show here, 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 here. This right. is desktop based people. Yeah. The peop the 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 majority of people who I think are using this that you want to use it are are going to be doing it from a desktop because they're they're the intern at the management office. Who's doing yeah, maybe this. maybe I think from what my early conversations, I think a lot of what they thought would happen with Connect would be the actual artists on the road, uh, hence the the mobile capability first. Um, and I don't think they were thinking about people like you and I who manage multiple accounts for other people. But let's put that aside for a second. I I think the idea of it is interesting, you know, kind of you know, one of the things I don't like about Spotify is, you know, when you sign up to kind of release that information so you can see what's being played. You know, I know a lot of people may like that, use that. To me it's a distraction. And it's not. Uh, it's supposed to be kind of a social thing, so I can say, "Oh, well, Mike Branville just played or is listening to this sort of thing." And there's some obvious, you know, issues with that besides the fact that it's distracting to me. But if somebody in my family is listening to anything, it shows up as me listening to to that. But that was kind of their social uh, integration. Looking at um, you know, Apple Music, I do love the fact that there's some social integration with, say, playlists. I love that there's that button on everything that I can send you a playlist, and you and I have sent each other playlists. It's super easy to do. I don't have to worry about, you know, seeing what other people are listening to right now. I think there's, there's an opportunity with Connect, and I'm not quite sure what it is, but there's a lot of eyeballs and ears in that space and I think 
you know, if they can differentiate themselves and find something that's meaningful that you and I and other music fans really would like to see and hear, um, I think it could be a success. Right now, it's it, it's it's lacking. Yeah, I mean, oh, it it definitely could be a great success, and there's a lot of eyeballs. But you know, back to your 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 original point of you know they looked at this as something that the artists themselves were going to do. To right. hear that statement right there makes me go, Apple, you're so completely out of touch. If, if you were really in touch with what's going on, you would know that the majority of artists are not doing this themselves. They, they don't have the time to do this themselves. They want to be there. They make the decision to be there. But then they put the task on somebody else to make it happen. So to, to think that the artists were going to all start, you know, that... The, Guys in Dream Theater are going to sit in the studio as they're recording their album and then update Connect. It's just, it's not going to happen. They're recording an album. That's what they're worried about. They're they're mm. touring. That's what they're worried about. There's a small percentage of artists who will do it, but that's not the overwhelming number of artists that are out there are not doing it. And then if you expected them to do it and you release such a kludgy thing to begin with, for for somebody like you or me who has the patience and the understanding and the technical insight to go, okay, I see what they really meant. Let me do it differently. You know, I go back to there's no way in hell Gene Simmons ever would have used this. He would have thrown his arms up and said, get this shit off of my computer right now. It doesn't work. It's a waste. It's a waste of my time. Or he would have called somebody up and said, and you and I know he who he'd call up. Mm -hmm. fix this, make it work, and do it. Yeah. You know, because the second an artist runs into something where it doesn't work or make sense, they're done. They're on to something else, and you've lost them. So that means when you release that product, it better be the true Apple, stupid, simple, it works. And and I don't think Connect launched that way. It wasn't stupid, simple, it didn't work. And it frustrated the hell out of the people like you and me who understood it and had the time to do it. And God forbid if there was an actual artist who, what do you mean I'm still waiting to be approved? You know, I put my application in four weeks ago. I don't have time for this. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I feel like it has great potential, but I just don't think they really understood what they want, what what was going to happen by launching it. It was sort of like, oh, we want to add this social networking part to music. Great. Well, let's do this, this. There you go. It's in there. Yeah. Well, dude. It looks good on paper. It looks good on paper, um, but it's not, it doesn't function in real life. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I don't disagree with a lot of what you're saying. I just think that, you know, it's 90 days in. Uh, I think that they're, you know, like I said, they're, I think they're smart people. And I think that they're looking at this too and having that, uh, you know, serious conversation about how to improve it. You know, what I can um, say is every day that it, it continues or stays like this is more people lost because it becomes <clears throat> less and less part of my daily workflow for my clients yeah, yeah. because it doesn't work. It doesn't provide that feature. Oh, okay. I'm going to share a Spotify playlist to Facebook or an album or whatever. But you know what? I'm sorry. I can't share my album to my connect page or, or for me to do it. I've actually got to then send myself information, move over to my mobile device, do it on mobile. You know, they don't, they didn't, think about all of that properly and you know the the longer it stays kludgy broken somewhat working the harder they're going to have to get people to come back in and fully adopt it oh i i agree and i but i think that right now i'm not sure that it's really hurting apple music i think it was one of those things no it's not it's not because it's, it's not generating it's it's not a i would people just ignore it to it's not a revenue center yeah you know, that's yeah. that's we want we want the iTunes user who we've already got a credit card for yeah. to click over and say, let's do streaming for a trial here. Yeah. And let's talk for a minute about, you know, we've seen these stories in, in the trades about how Spotify continues to grow uh, with 
Apple Music's launch. And I think that's something that we kind of anticipated early on that Apple wasn't necessarily looking to destroy Spotify. I think they were looking to grab people who weren't into streaming, knowing that that market is so small. Yeah, you know, let's say, let's say the number for Spotify is creeping up on a hundred million um, worldwide. That's that's great, but there's a lot more people. You know, Apple Music is there's now eight, moving into there's, China. There's eight hundred million iTunes customers. Yeah. So, you know, it's a drop in the bucket right now. There's a a lot of potential here. And I've kind of seen Apple Music as, you know, really kind of going after people, especially with some of these family plans that maybe are using YouTube or maybe using, I know a lot of people don't talk about this anymore, but BitTorrents and peer-to-peer, you know, file trading still happens. A lot of people still you know, just steal music. And it's not talked about as much uh, as it used to be um, with companies like Big Champagne, you know, um, being bought by Live Nation, and now it sounds like they're shuttered. Um, So people aren't maybe looking at the analysis like they used to. But one of the great things about streaming is it's especially free, uh, freemium, you know, uh, streaming, is it's a clear alternative to stealing music. And I think that's a, a positive thing. I think the challenge is really going to be how do you move those people who are okay with the ads, right? Move them into paying. I think that's going to be the biggest challenge for these streaming services. Yeah. I mean, why, why, what, what do I gain for $10 a month other than no ads? And there's some rules, I have, right? I have you the same catalog. Certain, yeah, there there are some some really you know odd rules about how many tracks you can skip and you know the same songs, how many listens, and those sorts of things. But most people aren't aware of those. Most people will, um, that'll never impact them, so it's not something they would want to pay to have those those restrictions removed. I mean, yeah, yeah some, you know, in, in in my opinion, what Apple is doing with music is is legitimizing streaming. They're bringing streaming to the mainstream music customer, where Spotify and Deezer and RDO have brought streaming to the the early adopters, the, the people who are on top of what's going on. Now Apple is bringing it to mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And mom and dad have an account on iTunes because they downloaded an album once or twice, and boy, wouldn't it be great. You don't ever have to download again. Pay $10 a month, and now you can listen to every one of your Frank Sinatra albums that you've ever right. wanted, every Elvis Presley album, whatever it is. That's where I see them How wanting important to. do you do you think it is for Apple to limit uh, to 90 days? Remember, Beats had a couple of weeks, and sometimes you could get that extended depending on how you signed up. But Apple having a, a 90 day kind of period, and then you you pay or you know you don't play. Whereas you know with Spotify, you can kind of hang on uh, forever, just um, listening you know, for free. I, don't, I think the 90 days to a consumer sounds fair, sounds reasonable for me to try something. Mm-hmm. But you know, if I were to really look at a lot of things where I've tried trial services. If I'm not using it after 30 days, I'm never going back to it for the next 60 days. So the, you know, the, the, the last two months are just a waste. But what they're also probably hoping is you've for two months completely ignored it and forgot about it. And ding, which goes back to your point earlier that it just ding number four, month number four, it's on your credit card and you're now a paying customer. And you know, this, this goes back to, like affiliate marketing and everything else, you know, it's like that nineteen ninety nine dollar point. It's it it's it's not it, for a lot of people. It's like oh, all right, I'll let it go this month. I'll worry about calling up, finding how to cancel it next month. You know, and especially if it becomes an and and they're not doing this in streaming, but this is like affiliate. If it's an odd dollar amount, you know, seven dollars and forty nine cents. Mm-hmm. You're like. That must have been lunch somewhere. I won't worry about it. Next month, $7.49 again. So, you know, there, there's a lot of um, tactics like that 
for keeping customers. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want them to to cancel, or you want right. to get you want to get three paid months out of them before they finally get around to canceling it. Right. Yeah, and I think that ten dollar price point is kind of a magic price point. It's, it's it's enough to where they can make some money, but it's not. You know, when you see it on your statement. It doesn't jump it's, out at it's, you. It's not. It's not forty nine ninety nine. Where I'd no. be like, oh, Christ, fifty dollars. I'm. I'm figuring out how to cancel it. Ten bucks. That's. Uh, I'm too busy right now. Um, maybe I'll get to it this weekend. Oh, I don't get to it this weekend. I'll get to it next week, and I'll get to it next. You know, ten bucks isn't a painful number. Right. Right. And speaking of the ten dollars, and I know we're going to dig into this on some upcoming shows, but it's really interesting that that ten dollars, if you're spending, you know, some people say the average for a music consumer these days is forty dollars a year. You start spending ten dollars a month, you've just tripled it to the, you know, the music rights owner. Let's call it the uh, the record company. So now they've, you know, they're getting one hundred and twenty instead of forty, and I think that. If they can convert more people to actually subscribing, it could be a healthy business again. Well, I think everybody's always said streaming, when it hits that critical point, mass numbers, it will start paying out money to everybody. It just has to build up a, a customer base, and it's just yeah. not there yet. You know, you need you need 100 million paying customers, not yeah. 100 million trials. Not a hundred million registrations, a yeah. hundred million ten dollars a month. Do the frickin' math on that. You know, yeah. That, the that's... big question, I think. Yeah, it, I mean, if we're going to succeed with this, someone's going to have to come up with the silver bullet to get those people who are, you know, listening for free, make it compelling for them to move. Um, whether it's you know it it. It's available on every TV, every device that you have. Um, although that's you know that's coming quickly. Um, I'm not sure what that answer is right now, but I think um, someone's going to figure it out um, how you get those people to move to actually paying. And I think that's going to change the game. Yeah, it will be. I mean, again, that's where I think Apple can really change this if they can get a percentage of those 800 million customers to switch over to streaming that's a huge win spotify can't do that spotify has to go out and win a brand new customer bring them in introduce them to the service convince you why you need Mm -hmm. to register apple already has Mm -hmm. them you're already in their database you've already been there you've already purchased all we need you to do is click a button that says yes charge me to give me streaming done done one click you know so mm-hmm. that's what they're i think they're hoping to do is is get that real casual music fan yeah introduced to yeah. streaming and how great streaming is and that it's worth you know you spend ten dollars a month buying one album spend that ten dollars on streaming and now you've got access to 30 million songs yeah yeah and i'd like to see um, how Pandora um, moves forward in the future. Do they become a hybrid company that also has some kind of uh, streaming service? I mean, 80 million people actively listening to Pandora, that's a powerful number. And I know that Spotify, Apple Music, and the rest would love to have some of that share uh, as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if there's a move at some point to try to maybe more greatly monetize uh, does, Pandora's does, base. Does somebody buy Pandora? Does one of the big yeah. streaming services acquire Pandora for nothing more than the customer base? Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's some people out there going, that's what we want. We could add 80 million people to our bottom number right now if we can acquire them. Yeah. 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 All right. Good talk. Good, Good talk. We, 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 we had a couple other topics, but as always, it's, it, 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 <laughs> one topic ends up taking the whole show up. Yeah. Um, all right. So if you guys got any comments on yeah. this, I'd especially love to know. And like our, we our, said before, we could 
Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, if you're using Apple Music, are you staying or are you going? What's your plans? I'd just love to get a rough idea of, of yeah. who's who's going to hang around and start paying. So go ahead. What were you going to say? There's a little bit of a, a delay uh, yeah. here. Um, no, I, j just exactly what you said. That's that's great. Um, we we have some really uh, great topics to discuss, and as always, you know, it, it'll take a little bit of time, you know, to right, go through right. these. I'd love to talk about Amazon a little bit more in an upcoming show, um, but uh, yeah, that was really good. Cool. All right. Well, as always, guys, thanks so much. It was it was great chatting again, Jay. And uh, if you guys got questions or comments, just hit us up on our our Twitter IDs, and we'll see you next week.